I want to talk to you today about fevers, something that most new parents are really worried about. And I get it. When your child is sick and uncomfortable and they've got a fever and you don't know what to do, it can be really scary. Unfortunately, a lot of what most of us have been taught is actually counterproductive. You see, a fever does two things. The first is it activates the immune system, allows the body to become more effective and efficient in killing off a virus or bacteria. The second thing is the increased temperature actually slows down the ability of the virus or bacteria to reproduce. So by stimulating the immune system and suppressing the reproduction of the virus or bacteria, the fever actually helps the immune system work better. Now, it's important to understand that fevers often fluctuate. Through the course of the day, as the infection goes on, the fever will gradually go up and down. So it's often that the fever spikes at night to help the body allocate all of its resources towards fighting the infection, as opposed to during the day when the body needs to focus on other things. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that the number doesn't matter as much as you think it does. A lot of parents are really worried about a number. 102, 103, 104. The truth is, is the number doesn't really tell you much about what's happening in your child's body. What matters more than the fever is how your child is handling the infection. So for instance, if your child has a 103, 104, even 105 fever, and they're otherwise active, interactive, talking, communicating, taking in fluids, then there's really not much to worry about in the absence of other symptoms. But if your child has a 101 fever and is lethargic to the point that they're not getting up, that uh, they're not taking in fluids, or they're otherwise uh, struggling to breathe, that is much more of a concern than the other situation. So what do you do when your child has a fever? Well, first off, the single most important thing that you need to do is make sure that they stay hydrated. Keep giving them fluids. If you're breastfeeding, keep having them nurse and latch. If you're bottle feeding, constantly offering, giving them something to constantly be taking in and staying hydrated. If the child's a little bit older, you can do a mixture of water and coconut water, something that will have electrolytes but not be overly sweet. And if you can't get them to drink, you can offer them little teaspoons constantly throughout the day or an eyedropper to make sure that they're constantly taking in fluids and staying hydrated. Dehydration is the biggest concern when we're talking about a fever. The other thing that you should do is monitor your child for behavior changes. So for instance, if a child is making eye contact, responsive, communicating normally, uh, if they're taking in fluids and getting wet diapers and staying hydrated, if they're breathing, all of those things indicate that a child has an immune response that is working appropriately. Now, if you're in a situation where the child is struggling with those things, you definitely want to seek medical care right away. The other thing to keep in mind is that part of taking care of a child with a fever is not only giving the fever time to work, but it's also about helping your child be more comfortable in the process. My personal favorite thing to do when my kids are sick is I take off my shirt, I keep them just in their diaper or underwear, and I basically have them skin to skin. Keeping them close and connected not only helps them feel emotionally soothed and comforted, it also helps using my body temperature to regulate theirs. So if the fever goes too high, my body temperature helps to keep it, uh, them a little bit more comfortable because it's cooler. If their fever breaks and all of a sudden they have chills, my body's there to keep them warm. Skin to skin is a really great way of keeping your child comfortable. You could also use a cool washcloth on the back of their neck or their forehead. You can do a room temperature bath. Uh, if you wanted to have fun and keep them hydrated, you can do little popsicles that you make with whatever ingredients that you'd like to, to do at home. But what's important is that you keep them comfortable, that you keep them hydrated, and you monitor for any changes. Of course, if you're concerned, if you don't feel confident in how to manage it, go and get medical attention. Have your pediatrician check them out, listen to their lungs, evaluate them, and make sure that they're otherwise okay. But don't feel like you need to treat or reduce a fever with any medication because very often that actually is counterproductive and causes the virus or bacteria to last longer and cause more sickness. Now, the one stipulation that I think is really important to note is if your child is under the age of two months, 
then a fever over 100.4 can be a medical emergency. So if you have a child in those first couple months that all of a sudden develops a fever, immediately go to the emergency room or urgent care and have them check to make sure that everything's okay. But in older kids, it's important to understand what a fever actually does and how it supports the body. And then your role as a parent is more about keeping them comfortable, keeping them hydrated, and just being on the lookout to make sure that everything's working well. Besides that, the one other thing that I always recommend is if you already see a chiropractor for your children, getting your kids adjusted when they have a fever is a great way of supporting their immune system and working better. Not only so that they're more comfortable, but so that their immune system is able to work more efficiently and hopefully help your body, uh, help your child's body heal more, uh, more quickly. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to pose them in the, in the comment section below. And thank you for listening.